Welcome back, it's me Lou. I'm here for another action figure unboxing and review. And today we are featuring this special three action figure set from Jazzwares. It comes from their World of Halo action line. We have the three villains. We have the Elite Ultra with Energy Sword, which is in the middle here. And we have two Grunt Conscripts with their Needlers. One here and one here. And if you look carefully behind them, um, it also features three action figure bases. Alright, so uh, this is a set I recently purchased on Amazon. Um, for me, it was kind of a must buy. If you're army building and if you're world building, um, you need multiple, multiple, multiple characters to build up your armies. And this specifically is a great army builder set. Um, if you want to build up your Covenant or your Banished, you know, you buy up a couple of these and then already you'll have multiple Ultras, Ultra Elites. So this is a great set. Um, it looks fabulous. Uh, the characters look great. They look very true to form as how they look in the video game. So very, very excited to open this and check it out. On the back of the box, oh, very lazy package design. We get nothing but uh, image of Master Chief running. So, all right. So this is one of the earlier sets. This came out last year in 2020, and I kind of theorized that you know part of the reason why um, the back was as as bare as it was was partially because maybe the game was delayed, and they didn't want to spoil the game. So you know they refrained from like. You know, posting additional photos of other other figures and, and of other characters. Um, you know, maybe Jazzwares didn't have a whole lot to run with uh, with the delay of the game. So, you know, maybe they had very little, little information, so they just went with this graphic. Um, but other, other, I mean, either way, this looks lazy. Um, it's a nice image, but with all this extra real estate, you know, it's kind of weird that they wouldn't use it to try to really sell their product in this... You know, let you know what else is out there in terms of the the other waves, if there's vehicles. But it is what it is. All right, so let's get started and open this up. Okay, we have the three action figure bases. All right, these are excellent bases. Um, if you're unfamiliar with them, um, they're hexagon in shape, so there's one, two, three, four, five, six sides. Uh, there's tabs and notches on each side. So what you could do is you could take the bases and you could interlock them together, like so. And then this allows you to make um, larger... Uh, larger and more um, professional looking display scenes so you know if you have a nice shelf where you're, in, where you're going to display your action figures these bases they're not only decorative but they're also functional in the sense that they provide stable support for your action figures with each base having two pegs now these are the bases in the earlier sets are very different than the first than the um, later sets because they redesigned them slightly uh, the first set of bases, if you look here, you have the tab and then you have the notch. And underneath this notch, you can kind of see a, a lip or edge right here. Uh, the newer bases don't have that lip, so it makes connecting the bases a lot easier. Uh, for these older bases, you couldn't, just, you couldn't connect them by just going straight up and down. You had, to go, you had to approach it at an angle like this and then twist it. Whereas the newest, the newer bases, 
since they're missing this lip right here, you can easily attach the bases easy, uh, easier because they just go, they just clip going straight up or straight down. You don't need to approach it at an angle and twist anymore. Uh, but either way, uh, the bases I believe are compatible, the old ones and the new ones, and they just look great. Um, so yeah, very very cool. Um, I'm still trying to figure out like so for the older bases, it's kind of and it's kind of um, difficult to connect them in certain positions. Which is uh, if, uh, which is why I believe they redesigned the bases to begin with. It's like a weird puzzle sometimes if you want to, if you want them to connect in like um, a little bit more complicated patterns. Like if you connect them end to end, it's simple. But the minute you want to connect one into the middle, due to the nature of the twist feature, it's kind of not that it's impossible, but they don't make it easy. So that I'm glad they redesigned the bases. And they're really nice. There's a nice texture. For example, this one has a nice stone texture. Like maybe this is a street. Um, some of the other bases resemble maybe like grassland. So it's kind of cool that, you know, they give you multiple bases with different biomes. Uh, moving on to the figures. First impressions of the figures while they're still in the tray. Uh, they look great. Uh, like I said, this is a fun set to um, buy multiples of because it's so easy to build up your armies. Uh, these are, you know, these are basically generic cannon fodder characters. They don't re represent any specific uh, character from the video game. So you're basically just getting generic grunts and generic elites. All right, so let's start... Uh, with the grunts first. So these are the grunt conscripts. If you've played Halo, the grunts are the little guys that are always just running around and they always yell with the, their high pitched voices. Um, they always seemed very comedic to me, but you know, they've been in the video games for like 20 years. And I don't think they have any desire to redesign them and make them any like any more serious. You know, they are what they are. They're essentially just plain grunts. So these are essentially, you know, kind of like the nameless cannon fodder of the Covenant or the Banished that run around. And they all take the hits. Um, their design is very iconic in the world of Halo. Uh, they're very short, they're very stout, they have the really, really large and tall backpacks. Um, over here, they have their... Um, these are the Needlers. Uh, in terms of like Halo weaponry, for me, these are some of the most iconic weapons in the game. Uh, they're very distinct in their shape and their color. Uh, these are often brandished, uh, or these are often um, wielded by uh, the Covenant and also the Banished. And they're called Needlers because, of course, you know, the needles. They look great. I love these weapons. Um, another weapon that's really well. That's really well known in the Halo universe. Um, if I could get it out. Alright, this one's a little bit tricky. So another very iconic weapon in the Halo universe are the energy swords. Um, this one's made of a really soft plastic. It's kind of a little bit too flexible for my tastes. Um, I'm kind of curious if this is like a safety precaution, you know, especially if this toy is aimed more at kids than collectors. 
Um, it looks, the, I mean, it looks to be the part, but once you handle it, it just feels kind of really, really flimsy. And mine's a little warped in the package. Uh, you'll find that often with some of these um, weapons that are included with the uh, World of Halo figures. Um, you know, they're made of a softer plastic, and when they're packaged in the tray, it's not, it's very common to, like, remove them and find them just to be warped. Um, you can easily straighten them out, just dip them in hot water and reshape them, and then run it under cold water, and then it'll just cool off. And once it cools off, it'll be, you know, back to, like, good as new, and it won't be bent anymore. Over here we have the Elite Ultra. Now these guys are pretty much, this guy retains his trademark look. So the Elites, they kind of have, uh, the jaws of their mouth is kind of similar to the Predator where it kind of goes out like this. And then they also have kind of like the chicken legs, you know, where, here, where their knee comes out. And then it com comes back in, and at the ankle, there's almost like an extended like shin that's bent. So, this is an Elite Ultra. Uh, here's his energy sword. The fingers here are very, very bendable. Um, they're made of a softer plastic, so it's easy to bend and get the weapons in place. It just takes a little work just to get it in perfect. Yeah, so here's the Elite Ultra with the Energy Sword. And then for the Grunt, um, very, it looks like their hands already, their fingers are already well splayed out to accept the weapon. And then you just fit the Needler in their hands. All right, I'm just trying to right now just I'm trying to adjust the arm in the right position. Yeah, some of these joints are kind of tight, so this word of caution when you're handling these. Arms do not, the arms are supposed to rotate at the elbow, but they're kind of stuck. So I might have to fix that a little bit later. Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to rotate this arm so I can bend it properly, but it does, it's not cooperating. All right, that one got it bent, but I can't get it to swivel. I'll take a look at that later. All right, for now, let's just take the figures and uh, start doing a detailed review on them. All right, I have to say, of all the figures I've reviewed so far, um, I love the way the grunts look because they, they look like how they do in the video game. But every version of the grunt that I've handled... It, it, they just feel awkward that they're where their joints are it, they don't move as naturally as I'd like um, they're very top and back heavy so sometimes just trying to get them to stand could be a, a chore um, I mentioned this in a previous video you know the only way to get them to really stand like with stability is to use one of these bases I mean that's what the figure stands are for but you know if you're someone that just wants to display them like in a different environment or without the base or if you're doing fig photography it's going to be a challenge to get them to stand up straight without using a base all right let's get to it um let's start with the grunts first all right so these are shorter stockier characters 
Uh, the sculpting is nice, as you can see. Um, they have the breathing mask in the front. Nice sculpted details. The paint application is okay. Um, it's not 100% perfect. You know, sometimes the paint falls a little bit short of the sculpt. Sometimes it bleeds a little bit over. Um, but for the most part, it's decent. It's not the greatest in the world. Uh, the sculpting's well done. Um, although it's a little bit on the soft side. Some of the edges aren't as sharp or as hard or as like highly defined as, as I'd like. But it's still very detailed nonetheless. As you can see here, the grunts kind of have almost like a lizard-like or like turtle-like um, texture on their skin. In terms of articulation, the grunts, their heads rotate, their arms rotate, and they could go out if the joint's not stuck. <clears throat> uh, their elbows bend, there's the elbow bend. And then they also, the elbow also swivels. Uh, in terms of their, their body articulation, there's a cut underneath their armor so they could rotate at the waist. Uh, they could kick up, double jointed knees. And then they also have ankle articulation, very tight ratchets in their ankle. You can could, you could feel the indents when you move them. And I believe both of these grunts are identical. So like I said, these are great for army building. You know, you can really uh, amass a nice army for the Covenant or for the Banished with these grunts. All right, so I have some other grunts on here we could compare them with. Uh, this is, is the Grunt Assault from the Shade Turret. Uh, as you can see, much different armor. A uh, different helmet altogether. Uh, the backpacks are different. And at, and the, if you look carefully, the hands are different as well. They, they are not the same sculpt. Um, I believe the forearms might be the same. I'm not 100% sure. No, I take it back. The forearms are different also. The legs look to be the same. Um, there's additional paint application on this guy on the toes, whereas this one doesn't have like the, the painted toenails. So this is another version of the Grunt. Like I said, this one comes with a shade turret. And then over here, we have the Grunt Mule. Uh, this one is armored up a lot more than the other two. Um, as you can see here, uh, a lot thicker armor on the shoulders, completely different backpack, different aesthetic altogether. Um, the head's fully helmeted, uh, additional armor pieces on the forearms and on the legs. And it shares a very similar um, articulation design as the other figures. And they're all in scale with each other, so they're roughly around the same height. So uh, those are the other two grunts. And let's take a look at our Elite, our Elite Ultra. Uh, nice sculpt. The armor on the Elites, it's always, they're always very aerodynamic, very smooth. A lot of graceful curves in the profile, a lot of contour lines. Um, beautifully designed characters. I love the Elites. I think they look great. In terms of articulation, um, his head rotates. I believe the neck is pretty stationary. Yeah, the neck doesn't want to move. It's just, it's just where it's at, even though it's as long as it is. But with the head, he can look down. Um, he can look forward. He can't look up. And looking side to side, his head more so just kind of rotates than turns. Um, he has torso articulation there's a cut underneath his ribs and he could kind of turn a little not a whole lot um, there there is no ab crunch he can't lean back his arms can rotate and they could go out if i find the joint they go out um elbow swivel 
elbow bend, articulated wrists. Uh, the elite can kick forward this much and his leg pops out. Um, very simple design, uh, ball joint, socket, but it's, hope it's not, do they all remove that easily? Um, he has more articulation than some of the other figures in, in the leg because he has a thigh swivel right there. So he has a thigh swivel, um, his knees can bend, and they can also swivel. Um, his ankles are the articulations located up here, so they can, can bend, and then uh, his foot has this mi very mild rotation. Um, it seems to hit the armor pieces, so it's kind of limited. Great figure. Um, it you know if you want more elites, I, I'd highly recommend it. Uh, there's an elite arbiter that I, I'm not sure if they're going to release it single, uh, single carded, but I know that GameStop's doing a 20th anniversary uh, set, and it comes with the Warthog, Master Chief, and the Arbiter, and I believe that comes out towards the end of January, I think. So if you if you're waiting for an arbiter figure, you know if they haven't released one already, um, I think you know the only way you might be able to get them is just maybe through that set. All right, comparing uh, these guys to some of the other characters. All right, so we have, we have a Sharam here, um, uh, the big baddie from Halo Infinite, and as you can see, he dwarfs the um. He just t completely towers over the, the grunts, completely dwarfs them. Um, the elite, you know, depending on how you adjust the legs, you could probably equally like measure up to a Sharam, but in terms of mass, this is a much bulkier figure. Um, let's grab over here, we have Master Chief, just to give you a size comparison with all the different characters. And we have another Spartan armor. Uh, this is Spartan Selox. And then we have a Marine. The Marine's one of the shorter figures in the line. Very small. So this gives you an idea of the scale and the height range across you know, this action figure line. Yeah, so the World of Halo action figures is a wonderful line. Um, you know, there is a four-inch scale action figure with some of the larger figures like uh, Asharam here being five inches. Um, you know, with the other toy line that Jazzwares is producing, the Spartan Collection, those feature larger six-inch scale action figures, and those seem like it's aimed more at uh, the more much more serious collector who's all about collecting stuff like maybe like. Star Wars Black Series or G.I. Joe Classified Series. These are fun. Um, I think these are aimed a little bit more at kids and for the collectors who want to, like, this army build. Uh, this, you could you can army build with a Spartan collection, but the price point's a lot higher. You know, you're paying, like, $19 for those figures. Whereas for these, you know, um, World of Halo figures, you're looking at, like, maybe, like, 9 to 10 bucks just for one figure. Yeah, so great figures. Um, so how would I rate this set on a scale of 1 to 10? Um, for me, um, I'm going to say um, a 9 as a set as a whole. Um, this is, for me, the perfect set to, to buy multiples of if you want to really build up your, your armies, especially the Covenant or the Banished. You know, you're getting two grunts, with, and the grunts are always, always plentiful on the maps in Halo. Um, you're getting an elite, and the elites are just badass. So, yeah, you know, this is a must-purchase. I'm going to, you know, if I had to rate the set as a whole, yeah, like I said, maybe like an 8 at the lowest, 9 at the highest. Um, I do still have some issues with the grunts in terms of the articulation and this, you know, the way they're designed. Um, like I said, they're very top heavy. It's hard to get them to stand properly, but you know, otherwise 
otherwise they're great they look like what they're supposed to look like and they're detailed great figures and you know this is fun to get these sets also because of the weapons you know if you want to give master chief other weapons than the stock um unsc rifles and pistols you know this is a great way of giving them the weaponry that you know with that we see like in the that's wielded by the covenant all right let's wrap this video up once again my name is lou thank you so much for checking out this video if you're new to my channel welcome if you are a returning viewer or subscriber thank you so much for your continued likes comments and support i greatly appreciate it so until the next video be safe take care of yourself and most importantly be happy and I'll talk to you later.